In the last video, we learned the rules for counting significant figures, and in addition, we learned the logic behind those rules. Now I would like to do something similar with how significant figures are applied in arithmetic. We quickly recall that we have these three large cylinders, and we will also remind ourselves of what the estimated volume of liquid was when we covered these previously. And now let's say that I want to add the volumes of liquids from cylinder A and B to one another. Well, because I previously stated that these two liquid levels were identical, we know that cylinder A's volume level is about 1.36, just like cylinder B. But imagine that we didn't have that cylinder B to compare to, and we were just going off of this alone. And so we would be left with that estimate that cylinder A's volume is either 1.3 or 1.4. Let's just go with 1.3 for this example. And then let's imagine we bring in cylinder B, where we can definitely estimate its volume as being 1.36. And then we add these two together. Well, mathematically, we would get 2.66, right? But let's think from the point of view of significant figures. With regards to cylinder A, we have no idea what this digit in the hundredths place is. Is it 1.32? Is it 1.38? Is it even 1.3 something? Maybe it's 1.41. It's really hard to tell if this was our only information of the volume of liquid in cylinder A. This number here is really a total question mark. And that means that this number here is also a total question mark, right? a relatively well-known number plus a completely unknown number ultimately gives us a completely unknown number. And so at this point, this is no longer a reasonable estimate, and we should just round to the tenths place. That hundredths place is no longer a reasonable estimate due to cylinder A. And so this brings us to our first rule of arithmetic. For addition and subtraction, the result will carry the same number of decimal places as the quantity with the fewest decimal places. So in our previous example, this number was estimated to the hundredths place, but this number could only be estimated to the tenths place. Thus, the summation of the two can also only be estimated to the tenths place, right? This number here is estimated to fewer decimal places than this number here. And that is the logic of what I mean when I say fewest decimal places, quote unquote. As for multiplication and division, well, the result has the same number of sig figs as the quantity with the fewest sig figs. So I'm going to show you a couple of demonstrations of this rule in effect. And the first thing I'm going to do is the simplest thing, which is to just multiply the two volumes in cylinders A and B together. Now, for the record, there is no practical reason we would ever do this in a chemistry problem. There is no reason we would ever multiply volumes together. But again, I'm just showing you this rule in effect in the simplest manner possible. So here we go. Cylinder A times cylinder B, 1.3 liters times 1.36 liters. And you'll see why I'm suddenly including the units momentarily. Although we should technically always be writing our units when we're doing math. I've just been bad this video. Okay, if I do this correctly in the calculator, I will get 1.768 liters squared. But now let's deal with sig figs. This number has two significant figures. This number has three significant figures. And so the final answer must have two significant figures as well because that's the rule. Whichever number going into the calculation has the least amount of sig figs, that's how many sig figs our final answer must have. So I'm going to round to the tenths place in this case, which gives me two sig figs. I do want to quickly point out that it is a total coincidence that this answer here and this answer here have the same number of significant figures. At the end of the day, the rules for addition and subtraction are different than the rules for multiplication. There are definitely cases where adding two numbers versus multiplying two numbers will give different final numbers of sig figs as their answer. You just have to follow the rules appropriately. Now, the reason why multiplying two volumes together is such a silly thing to do is because we ultimately wind up with the unit liters squared, which is a six-dimensional unit. 
which is not something we would ever consider in a general chemistry class. But again, this was the simplest multiplication problem I could think to do with this situation. Now let's do something a bit more complicated and cover the very last point that I want to cover regarding mathematics and sig figs, which is how we deal with conversion factors and significant figures. So first let's address that there are two types of conversions we find ourselves doing in this class. Prefix conversions, like going from liters to milliliters, and unit conversions, which is where we go from one unit to something totally different potentially, like milliliters to grams. And so I'll cover what this text means through example. So let's say that we want to calculate the mass of water at 25 degrees Celsius in cylinder B, given that this is the density of water at that temperature. Well, we remind ourselves that our volume was estimated as being 1.36 liters, three significant figures. To use this density to get from liters to grams, we first need to change our prefix from liters to milliliters. And so we would use a prefix conversion, where we say that there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. And these are both to be considered as exact numbers. There is no error in this conversion here. And there never will be for prefix conversions. Everything is exact. This should be interpreted as meaning there are exactly 1,000 milliliters in exactly one liters. And we recall the definition of an exact number something that is perfect, there is no error to it whatsoever. Whereas when we do the unit conversion next, where we go from milliliters to grams, well, now we have some potential error. Notice how specific this number is. That is an estimate of how many grams there are per milliliter of water. We could in principle measure it more accurately. Maybe it's 704823 grams per milliliter, but in this particular measurement of the density, we know it to six sig figs. So the proper interpretation of this conversion factor right here is that there are approximately 0 0.997048 grams in exactly one milliliter. So that's what I mean up here when I say for unit conversions, the one is considered to be an exact number, but the other part is an approximation. It's ultimately a measurement. There is the rare exception where a unit conversion has both numbers as being exact, but in general, go with this rule here. And so if we were to do this math, what do we wind up with at the end? Well, we get a three sig fig number. Why? Well, we recall the rules for multiplication and division. The final answer has as many sig figs as the least known number going into this equation. In that case, that would be this 1.36, right? You might be tempted to think that that's a one sig fig number, but again, remind yourselves of what the meaning of an exact number is. There is no error there. And so really all that we need to consider is a three sig fig number being multiplied by a six sig fig number, which then gives us a three sig fig number at the end. Again, this is why it's very important that we understand this logic here. When do we consider the significant figures and when should something be considered an exact number so that we don't botch the end result? So those are significant figures for you. Hopefully you're able to not only understand the rules, but understand the logic that creates those rules. And again, I think this is a general problem in general chemistry that students run into is they memorize rules without actually understanding them but almost everything can be understood at the gen chem level.